Uh, this weekend there was an editorial about City of Fargo and just wanted to make some points today when we were talking about that. Downtown Fargo is a vibrant core of our community and a regional epicenter for arts, entertainment, and commerce. The safety of our residents and visitors in every area of our city, including downtown Fargo, is the highest priority of this city commission. All my commissioners would feel the same on this issue. We have seen instances of tragic crimes in our community recently which, while rare, are jolting our close-knit metro. I can wholeheartedly reiterate to everybody that Fargo is safe for people of all ages and walks of life. I'm proud of the diligent work that the Fargo Police Department, which plays a vital role by incorporating community-centric, intelligent policing strategies. Acts of random violence are rare in Fargo, even when considering our growth into a true metropolitan area. Many times when a violent crime is committed, it has been discovered that the parties knew each other and the crimes were not random. The city is committed to ensuring safety of all residents and visitors in downtown Fargo by fostering a spirit of cooperation, partnership, and vigilance between all parties. I have visited many downtowns across America. I have seen deterioration of the cores of those cities. We will not let those things happen to our community our expectations and standards do not allow it. The City of Fargo's main mission is to protect and serve its residents. The Fargo Police Department is devoted to protecting and serving Fargo. Chief Dave Todd and the Fargo Police Department are committed to a safe community and has increased officer presence in the downtown area and foot patrols will also be increased in the downtown area. People to people contact, building relationships and deterring poor behavior will be the core of those officers in their duty. Chief Todd, can you speak to this issue? Yes, good, e good evening, uh, Mayor and Commissioners. Um, thanks for giving me the opportunity. The Fargo Police Department continues to actively investigate the homicide that occurred at, at 6th Avenue and 4th Street uh, of Jay Halverson that occurred on June 7th. And within the day, we were able to arrest two individuals we feel are responsible for that crime. Uh, and are connected to that case. And we don't believe there's anybody else that we need to be looking for at this time. Uh, it appears as though it was a negative verbal interaction between Mr. Halverson and the, and the two suspects uh, prior to the shooting uh, taking place. It doesn't appear that it's related to the business. It doesn't appear that it's related to the downtown area. It's just where that particular act happened. Uh, we have multiple detectives continuing to follow up on this case and, and continue, continuing to build it. Um, as the mayor said, we are um, incorporating more foot patrols in the downtown area because I think that person-to-person -person contact and that visibility is important. I have in the audience Lieutenant George Vinson, who is the present lieutenant for the downtown district, and I also have the past lieutenant uh, Chris Helmick here in the audience, and they've, they've uh, helped me throughout these last years in our policing our downtown area. We've also been using a JAG grant uh, for putting extra officers out on the street during bar closing in the downtown area. Um, we have run a couple of panhandling stings, and we have some more scheduled here in the near future. Uh, we have our downtown resource officer uh, program that has also come up with a work program for uh, offenders so that they can work off their fines and, and not have them result in warrants. And then through that programming can then get them into services, whether it be for alcoholism, addiction, or mental health issues, and then work them towards getting into housing. Uh, we're involved in the safety community and we work extensively with the DCP uh, for programming of, of safer events down in the downtown area. We also am on the Liquor Control Board with uh, a couple of your commissioners there, and we try to address issues as we see them come up with license holders uh, and to try to hold them accountable. Uh, there's always more that we can do in that area, and, and we'll certainly seek on how we can do that. But one of the things that I will say that is when we do with, work with liquor license holders, uh, as both my lieutenants have. We try to do that in partnership with them to get their staff to help us address that issue and, and solve those problems. Thank you, Chief. The Downtown Community Partnership and Business Improvement Districts are leaders as well. They are tremendous partners for the City of Fargo 
and they have formed a downtown safety committee to, with representation from every block on Broadway from Main to 6th Avenue North, at least one representative from each of the outlying zones. This also includes the Fargo Police, the FM Homeless Coalition, NDSU Student Body, President, and downtown residents. The committee is actively working to keep downtown Fargo safe, and I'll have uh, Melissa Rademacher speak to this issue. Hi, and, thank and a you. Bid guy. Yes, we have Chris Schlepp here as well. He's operations uh, manager for the Business Improvement District. I've invited him because the collaboration, the partnership is so vital between the bid, the DCP, as well as uh, the police department that Chief Todd mentioned. Um, we fully support the additional um, efforts that are taking place in the city. Um, the communication and efforts that are happening are phenomenal. Uh, the DCP currently has a safety committee that we're very um, active in. Um, it consists of about 12 to 15 members, varies from the Fargo Police to the BID, DCP, residents, um, mobile detox, a uh, variety of residents and um, businesses. So it is definitely top of mind. It's something that, uh, like you said, the cooperation of um, the spirit of cooperation, partnerships, and vigilance between all parties is so vital to make sure that we are having a safe community and the heart of our city is downtown. From the bid perspective, um, and I'm agree with Melissa, we work hand in hand together with the police department, with mobile outreach, with community leaders to make sure downtown Fargo remains safe. And from our perspective, from a bid perspective, it is safe. We do have a safety ambassador that works from Thursday through Saturday evenings until 10 p.m., uh, both mobile and walking around uh, downtown Fargo. And uh, we're there to observe and report serve as another set of eyes for the community and for the police department. And when we say, when we see something, we say something and we report it. Um, and the relationship is very positive with the police department and with the uh, community residents. And uh, we appreciate it. And uh, from our perspective, again, downtown Fargo is safe. Thank you, both of you. Liquor licenses are a right, not a privilege. We talked about that in the paper as well. The Fargo Liquor Control Board is tasked not only with issuing new licenses, but also with ensuring current li liquor license holders meet the requirements to retain their license. There have been a handful of businesses which consume a large amount of time and effort on law enforcement, and I'll be suggesting to the Liquor Control Board schedule public meetings with these license holders to formulate a plan of action for improvement. If there's some things that can be done, and I reached out to Commissioner Pepcorn, and we will be meeting with some of the owners to talk about what can we do to make it better. Successful improvements uh, uh, in the city are not city. If the successful improvements are not seen in the bars or off sales area, the city has a right to suspend and then potentially revoke liquor licenses. All options will be on the table, and I assume the liquor board to address those issues. The city of Fargo also needs partners in establishing excellent neighborhoods and maintaining those neighborhoods. Just like every venture, the city of Fargo needs partners to help achieve its goals. We are asking residents to help in their neighborhood, in their community. We offer programs such as the Neighborhood Revitalization Initiative to rehabilitate homes. This has allowed us to invest millions of dollars into improving neighborhoods. We're always looking for more community partners in this venture, but due to low interest rates offered by the private lending sector, we did not expend all the funds in the loan pool at this time. Commissioner Strand of the Community Development has funds available. The problem is the interest rates are close, so some people have not taken advantage of that. In the times in which the interest rate was at 2% and the loans from the bank were 4 or 5%, you'd be tempted to do a home improvement at 2%. Right now, the interest rates are very close, so we're happy to look at any other aspects in neighborhood improvement and community development has been tasked to do that. And we will work at other ways to help to improve the neighborhoods. Your city commission and city staff are here to help you, and if there's any way in the neighborhood you come up with ideas, please approach them, and they will uh, work on that. The Kilburn Group also has been working diligently with the neighbors to redevelop SARS Sun, uh, Sudden Service property. This fall, they will take down SARS Public uh, Sudden Service property and uh, demolish that site to make way for future, future development. They have trying to work in the neighborhood, had 20 public community events that were held in this property over the several months, and they're trying to make the neighborhood a livable, walkable area. They hope to move forward eventually with a neighborhood-centric alternative in this place, and I think they'll work with our planning department to come up with what might go in that space. City of Fargo Commission has recently implemented recommendations of public safety salary analysis to ensure the Fargo police and the Fargo fire employees are compensated properly to the level of work we expect of them. 
We are losing our public safety employees to other communities as well as to the private sector. We as a commission took action to ensure we can retain and attract the best candidates. In addition to streamlining our police operations with the unified new Fargo Police Headquarters, we are committed to maintaining a storefront presence of the Fargo PD in downtown Fargo. We anticipate having an office in the downtown area so people can have it easily accessed and, and come to them as needed. It is critically important that the city of Fargo's police force is seen and present at that place. And lastly, we were asked the question, what does the city or what does the community want? Around this time of year, we're working our department heads to assemble a budget. We hear comments from some of the need to lower property taxes. Well, this is always a good goal to have. I think it's an opportunity to put things into perspective when it comes to mill levies in Fargo. The city, through its home rule charter, has the ability to tax up to 64 mills. We currently are at 51 mills. In the past seven years, we have reduced the mill levy by 7.25 mills. And this has uh, limited the impact of our ability to hire additional city employees who serve a growing city. As we grow, we have to look forward. One mill in the city of Fargo right now in revenue is $562,000. If we reduce our tax level by one mill and you own a $250,000 home, you'd see a property tax reduction of $10.69. But for example, if we were able to raise it by one mill, this revenue could fund seven additional police officers. These are significant facts that the residents have to consider when we have this community conversations about how to protect our residents. So when looking at the budget, contact your commissioners, tell them what your feelings are. Do we have enough police officers on the street? Do we need to put more foot patrol out there? Do we need to do other things in the community to make you feel safe? It costs money to do any of those things and the commission has stood firm behind safety in the city and we will continue to stand firm behind that as well. We will do what is necessary to keep the city safe. So if there's any further discussion the commissions want, that's kind of our answer to the question. I think city leadership is very well tuned that we, we want safety in this community. Commissioner. Mayor, I, I, I join you in, in, in this messaging, but on a more personal note, um, many of us had quite a bit of work with Jay Halverson, and, and, and we've just, for example, launching the downtown food truck program. He was the point of that process with our city. You know, so, so his fingerprints and his influence and his passion and his heart are so much in, in, in reflected in, in our food truck program. I, I can't begin to tell you how many texts and messages I got from him right up till three days before he was killed, thanking us as a commission for standing behind this vision and for standing behind it unanimously. So our, I know our community is just heartbroken over this tragedy. and. Uh, and I know we do our best to be a, a safe city. And, and, I, and I think it's horribly unfortunate that we've become such a gun culture. But those are other things for us to address too going forward. Mr. Grimsby. Just to comment, I um, appreciate um, the presentation and the your remarks tonight. I think they were spot on. Um, recently, I had visited with a couple of law enforcement officers after lunch on Broadway and uh, just having a discussion how things are going and to this issue of safety. and. And I brought up the place of last drink um, discussion that's been taking place with um, leadership in downtown, and and we had a discussion about that. And uh, but the comment was made. And I, this is my encouragement to the liquor control board. Um, it might make have more impact if you restrict off sale at 10 or 10:30 at night versus you know later in the evening, because that's where we really see the problems with the. Uh, massive quantities of alcohol bought and off sale in downtown after some point in time. And I just thought that was an interesting observation about we talk about alcohol and um, I just thought it was an interesting thing that I'd suggest to take a look at. 